Welcome in everyone to a castle game for Age of Empires 4 and today's spawning the west side of the map playing in red we've got Sassy playing as the Ottomans and his opponent on the east side playing in blue we've got the duck also known as Kilardi this is a smurf account of course it's going to be on the Byzantines welcome everyone to Dry Arabia the classic map the classic matchup I mean it's historically it's a big one the Ottomans versus the Byzantines and the reason why I'm like super excited about this one the Byzantines for a long time have been known as a uh, kind of a castle age powerhouse, but actually, with the most recent buff to the system, giving them an extra ten percent villager gather rate in the you know right from the get go, water level one. I you know it's 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 a, it's part of the new patch, right? It came as the new patch, but obviously players are playing it a little bit more and kind of exploring it. And I feel like actually the Byzantines in the in the feudal age, they are no joke. I like the way I like to think about it is civilizations that play an extended feudal age, you got to have something working for you, right? The Delhi had the access to the sacred sites, they can, you know, if they've got mid-map objectives, they've got the control. The thing about the Delhi, though, they have to actually get hold of it, right? They have to be active on the map, they have to control the game to be able to access that. Then you've got civilizations like the Ottomans that do have, you know, the free units from the military school. Okay, it's, it's fantastic, they're free units. Uh, I mean, free is free, right? You never say no to free, but ultimately, it does take some time to get going. Like, it, they don't just come out super fast, it takes time. And so the Ottomans power spike in the Feudal Age isn't immediate, it takes some time to grow. And to be honest, I reckon by the time you get to the Castle Age, that's really when you start to get a couple of, you know, you've had a couple of free units now. So it starts to accumulate quite well. The Byzantines, though, they give me the vibes of the HRE. Now, sure, the HRE bonus is a heck of a lot more, 40% on those guys for those villagers. But the Byzantines, 10%, it's not bad. Especially when you factor in the production rate is increased as well. So, you know, it goes hand in hand. And I think this matchup is a lot more fascinating on this patch than it once was. Because um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the bonus used to be 4% uh, for water level 1. Now it's 10. It's a big, big buff. Going to the berries nice and early. Now the question is as well, the Byzantines with this uh, choice of the feudal age, they can always opt for the Hippodrome. The Imperial Hippodrome is a very viable landmark if you're playing an extended feudal age. No. I mean, it has to be interesting though, because the Grand Winery is a superb landmark for the mid to late game. And even then, sort of the late, early-ish game, like they can get, you know, one batch of mercenaries at a good time. But it will indeed be the Imperial Hippodrome, looking to get the horsemen out on the field nice and quickly. And it will be the Twin Minaret Madrese for the Ottomans. No real surprises there. Going to get the free food from that. The berries, it's a very nice landmark to get. And of course, the other alternative is not particularly you know, chosen. But wait a minute, holy moly, that's 14 sheep! All right, well, that's an impressive number. The Byzantine scout having problems today that's a lot of sheep to come on in. and actually what's quite of interesting is that do the ottomans have to play an extended feudal age could they go for a cheeky castle age because ultimately with that amount of food food is not going to be a problem anymore especially with twin minaret madresse it's not something that necessarily plays to their main strengths but castle age could be important if you get the mehmed imperial armory get a mangonel nice and early but with three villages on gold it doesn't really suggest that's going to be the case for sassy just uh Thinking about his options at this point. Either way, Imperial Hippodrome can be coming up relatively soon. Looks like the Byzantines should get to the next stage a little bit quicker than the Ottomans. Now, Gali mentions in the chat, I think it was 5%. Yeah, that actually does ring a bell. Yeah, yeah. Because it was increasing in 4%, right? Or it was increasing by 5%, actually, in the odd patch. Either way, Sassy doing the thing. We've seen this actually a lot more often. That uh, sometimes you can't get too much value with the spears. So what you really want to do is, if they're close enough, you get the deer pushed on in. And I love this play because... Like, make no mistake about it, the, this food is incredible amounts of it. And it's going to be coming right underneath the town centre. The Ottomans are going to have food for a, for a very long time. And the significance of that, by the way, in extended feudal ages, uh, and, you know, if you do get to the early castle age, it does delay the need to get your farming transition. And it gets a, a free resource off the map, more importantly. Now, of course, if you do have full map control, it becomes less relevant, but you can't guarantee that. In this particular matchup. Going on stone. Now looking to maybe get the second military school. Unlikely for a second town centre. We'll have to see exactly what he plans to do with that. Because eight villagers. But it does sound like a, an excessive amount of villagers to go for. Just one extra military school. Interesting play. If he does go for a second town centre. Here's the first horseman out. Now the uh, Imperial Hippodrome. I quite like the landmark. Because of course it does give you the triumph ability. A very specific to this landmark you can't get it in any other way but also you can quickly upgrade your horsemen to expilatories giving them additional plus two damage against workers 
We also gave you a bit of an injection of gold, 20 gold per villager killed. Definitely a nice raiding unit, I've got to say, if you can get on top of the villagers. Spearman on hand, grouping up the the deer camp, slowly pushing one in, takes a bit of time. Coming around the south again, and it's going to get another horseman, going to keep pumping out, going into the barriers on the exposed position. Looks like it will be a second town centre play here for the Ottomans. Interesting, interesting. I mean, I guess in a way, it's not too bad an idea because he's pushed the deer camp, right? This is going to be the place for the second town centre. And the reason why I like this actually is because a lot of second town centre play in this most recent patch is very difficult to be aggressive with it. Like, when I mean aggressive, I mean in terms of placement. You can't often just go in the... Like, for example, this deer camp. Like, it wouldn't... Although, that'd be a nice spot, <laughs> that'd be a nice spot for a town centre, I've got to say. But it's, it's unlikely you'd do that as a second town centre because of the fact that they've recently been nerfed. They've got seven garrison no spots. They're pretty weak. They're pretty squishy in terms of HP, not huge amounts on them, and so it can be easily punished. And so what Sassy's done here is kind of made a, a second town centre, uh, what well, it's going to, or was planning to, put it here in this position and get the deer cap and woodline, but also quite close to home. It's got to be careful though, because the horse will never start to escalate a little bit and don't quite have the wood for it, just needs a little bit more wood. And he will have enough for that town centre. It's actually incidentally gathered 400 stone. So would have access to Aristlitz or enough stone for Aristlitz if he so wishes to get that. Staying with two villages on stone for the extra um, military school. Maybe he's not going for Aristlitz, he's just you know grouping up for the military school. Sipahi's out now for the Ottomans. Gonna try and push in, try and do some damage against the, the horsemen. Archers being added. This could be trouble for Sassy, I've got to say, because that town center doesn't look like it's going up quick enough. But it just might have to back away. I don't think he's got enough units to actually hold this position. I say archers, it's actually long weapons. So he went up with the Western military uh, contract, and that's looking a bit rough. I mean, does he have expellatories? He doesn't. That could have been huge if he did. He can afford it as well. Oh, he has to deny the town center. Oh, God, he has to delete it and replace it, going on the west side. Yeah, even this is a bit too greedy, right? This is what I'm talking about. Oh, no, the sheep. No, oh, sassy. Oh, that's devastating. Disaster. Absolute disaster. Oh, no, sassy the duck it's not duck on the menu anymore getting a big dose of lamb or sheep wait yeah sheep make lamb right as in wait i'm having a an elderly gentleman moment what meat do sheep give we won't talk about it either way second town center is now up and running Yeah, a point made in chat, it could have been Anatolian. It probably was Anatolian Hills for the sheep. Although, no, he did bring a lot with the scout, though. I think he may have actually drafted in Anatolian Hills either way, but, yeah, that's rough to give that away. He, he was confident he was getting the second town center, a little bit too overconfident, and unfortunately he lost a lot. Oh, God. 13 sheep, everything swung in the opposite direction. But uh, all is not lost. I mean, ultimately, sheep are a perishable item. Needs to uh, maybe just extend the game for a bit longer now. Sassy as the Ottomans, which is not something you often see them do. But I got to say, like, that is a massive loss. There's no two way about it. I'm just trying to not pour salt into the wounds for Sassy, okay? Because, you know, it can happen this. This sort of thing can happen. It's a big thing to have lost all of that. But the one good thing for the Ottomans is that actually in the late game, not, not too terrible a civilization. We could see a late game here because, you know, the Byzantines, they are, uh, whilst they're pumping out units, they're not doing sort of critical damage just yet. And I think if the Ottomans can hold, if we do see a sort of a late Castle Age play, the Ottomans, if they do transition to the Imperial Age at a good time, when they start to get bombard numbers up, it can be quite scary. Like the late Imperial Age for the Ottomans is actually pretty strong. Say the same for the Byzantines, though, of course, if their economy is re, uh, kind of focused on olive oil, you get plenty of mercenaries, although he doesn't have, of course, now the Grand Winery for that extra 60% boost. does have to cancel the military school and... Unfortunately, he's had to cancel a few buildings here. Sassy, have to build them a bit further back. And Hey, the Byzantines are in good control here. And of course, the Ottomans inviting a bit of pressure for going for that second town centre. And it will take some time for that for it to pay off. So this is a little bit tricky, I've got to say. <laughs> what is that placement? Yeah, it's a bit... I think the trouble is he's running out of space as well. Wait, where did that happen? All right, all right. Well, this is happening. Getting an outpost on either woodline. A lot of aggression from the Byzantines. 
This is certainly an interesting match. I'm glad that we caught this one. Yeah, he really wants control of this woodline. Kind of a bit of a problem, actually, because this woodline is going to be the one he's going to have to transition to. Then it gives it a focal point to attack on. That's a large military force there for the Byzantines. Getting the eco upgrades as well. Explanatorius is in, so if he does dive in, that could be massive. I think now's go time, actually. Bear in only seven spots in this TC, and, well, the other villagers have to run away. Every villager he kills, by the way, he gets two, 20 gold. But he does get a bonus of plus two damage on the villagers. Absolutely gets sniped out so quickly. Archer numbers getting decimated. One Sabai, not going to be enough. Going to come in with a couple more from the right side, but there's a triumph of Going to be healing up the horsemen. So they're going to dive underneath the town center and survive for a bit longer. Going to go for the berries there. Really struggling for food, and this is looking rough for Sassy. But he's got to keep the second town center running for as long as possible, right? Because that's his competitive advantage, eco-wise, but it's being camped on by Longbow and Horsemen. Really powerful combination for the Byzantines. Third outpost goes up as well. That's going to be very difficult to push, actually, because three outposts with arrow slits. Or two of them with arrow slits. Third one about to come in, I suspect. This is looking dicey. This is a very heavy, heavy play here. Although, to be honest with you, considering the player, Kilardi, like, if you're not convinced this is Kilardi from the name, obviously, is a Smurf account, then uh, I think we can pretty much guarantee it now because of the playstyle. <laughs> if you guys know Kilardi, how aggressive he can be. It's uh, definitely, definitely seems to be his type of play. Continuing with the outpost, so units that do pop out for the military school might be poked and prodded a little bit. Oh, archers there. That's not a good spot for them to go into. Going to snipe at the villagers, though. If he can, he does. Actually, that's actually kind of huge, because I think the outposts only see him now. I think if he was just in this corner of the military school, wouldn't have been seen, but now we see the Cairo Siphon. The Byzantines is going to look to start burning things down. Sassy's military school, the Ottomans, they're under fire, quite literally. Long is sniping off villagers on the tournament with Dresse, but take a look at this bit of raiding action with the Sabahi around the back. That's a massive pick, I forgot to say. Went heavily on the berries, the duck. Kiladi thought he could be really aggressive. He is being really aggressive, but he's been caught at home a little bit. There should be a good number of villager kills. That's a, that's a good comeback. I love this play by Sassy. You know, he, he feels like he can't clear up the army with what he's got. So he decides to get a counter in. It's a big one of that. And now he does have to back away. Continues with the outpost. This is suffocating, i got to say. He's relocated to the north. What a crazy game so far. We're only 13, 14 minutes into the game. And one thing to bear in mind, actually, is that the village count looking very healthy for Sassy. That second town center, he's kept it running the whole time. So that's pretty important. He's burning the berries. Sabai, moving, moving back towards the main base. But I gotta say, in the mayhem of it all, like the number of outposts that he's put in, actually, the amount that it achieves, it just denies one woodline. But it does give him a great staging ground to attack from. There's a two, there's two Kairos siphons. This is actually problematic. Wait a minute, there's only two landmarks, guys. This is a. Uh, this is tricky. Uh, Sassy needs going to have to try and defend this position really heavily. The good thing for Sassy, though, the longer the game goes on, his economy is actually really good. This game is not over. It looks like a bit of a sticky position, but if Sassy can somehow defend this, then he'll be alright. The question is, can he defend it? Goes down to one landmark now. That's the capital town centre. Karasaf is coming around the south. and That's a lot of Sipahi, I've got to say. Let's take a look at the army composition. Actually, you know what? I, I don't think Sassy dies here. Look at the Sipahi number. 14 of them. The longbows are pretty much irrelevant at that point if he gets us around. And there's only a handful of horsemen. He's going to lose the military school, but I love this. I think Sassy, he's cooking. He's waiting, right? He's not, he's not, he's being patient. Might look bad, the situation, but he knows that if he just pump out a couple more units, he'll be fine. And uh, it just needs time. It needs time to mass them up. Either way, Kiladi, though, pushing away a lot of villagers on that wood line. He's been exposed. He's been found out. He's been caught. Yeesh. That's a bit rough. But he's coming out, though, to try and burn down the Kairo Siphon. Going to lose production. I think now's go time, right? Sassy can only hold on for so long. 
and he's gonna wait. Where's gonna Does he have? Does he have textiles? Please have textiles. He doesn't have textiles. So how's he get textiles? Either way, he's got so many villages now, and he's gonna try and push back what he can. Taking the fight in the north against the Limitani, and then gonna clear that up and push on in. He's gonna fight with the villagers. Oof. Okay, it's to back away. He's tanking by in time. Kara Saffron's backing away though. I mean, the mass idle time is kind of bonkers. Thankfully, he has wheelbarrow. Thankfully, he has wheelbarrow. Pretty badly housed, though. Oof. He's actually uh, getting another military score now. And going to be burning things down with the Sapahi. I mean, ultimately, I think he's in a good spot. Like, it's mostly the army composition here that the Byzantines don't really have the units that you want. Drafts in a couple of the Janissaries. One outpost is down. Just another four to go. Karasaf can go for the second town centre, which is a bit problematic because that might burn down pretty quickly. Now, the Janissaries actually ripped through the horsemen. This is a nice play. The Janissaries actually clutch play because the longbows are going to be taken up with the Spahi. The, the horsemen get absolutely, absolutely taken down by the Janissaries. We'll lose that second town centre though, but he has extracted some value out of it already with the villager count. I mean, he's really going for this with the village, villagers. Does he have textiles now? He doesn't, which is, which is okay. We're just, you know, losing a couple of villages here and there. But what a crazy game so far. But it's coming out to burn these uh, Torxies, Kyra 7 down. Got to be careful not to stand on the fire, though, because that will burn them down. He clears it up, reclaims that wood line. And the push has been held. But behind all of this, by the way, guys, it looks like the castle edge coming in with the Golden Horn Tower for the Byzantines. And that does pose a big problem for the, the Ottomans, I've got to say. Because, uh... He's got to get to the castle stage himself. And I got to say, though, in amongst all this mayhem, Sassy is not far off the castle stage. He's played this incredibly well. Under all this pressure, he's managed to find a way to keep the economy rocking and rolling. Although this was a lot of villages to idle for a long time. But he's not far off the, the castle stage. It's impressive, I got to say, how he's managed to do this. Kilaudi, though, coming with so much aggression. This is, a, this is a really good game on all counts. Kiladi is going for more outposts. He just does not want to give up on the forward aggression. He wants to get rid of the wood situation for Sassy, but... Sassy now coming up with the aggression with Sapahi. Here's the age up. Could go onto that gold vein now with Kiladi being so aggressive. He hasn't actually been able to stabilize at home in terms of static defenses. Has been pushed off for gold in a big way, which is massive. We always talk about it on the channel on Casted Games that when you get to the Castle Age, the two key resources are food and gold. And if you get pushed off for gold, it's a big thing. But he should be able to be okay with the Limitane and Longbowmen coming up here to protect. Of course, the defender's advantage certainly helps with that. Now, after all of this, <laughs> 18 minutes of the game, we have to say it's actually very, very even between the two players. It's almost like we're resetting back to the base basics again. By the way, if I'm not mistaken, I think the berries actually replenish, even though the uh, Twin Mineral Bajesse is down, so it doesn't actually matter the fact that he's taken it down. Apart from the fact that there's, you know, one less landmark to deal with. But uh, Sassy's still not clicking up to the next stage, which is a bit of a concern. Like, he, he, he needs gold, right? That's a problem for him. He's got five villages of gold. He's going to need a lot more, especially when he gets to the next stage. And yeah, he's transitioned now. He's got a couple more there. Going to go with the Mehmed Imperial Armory. No real surprises there. Going to give him access to some siege engines. Going to go with 15 villagers. Needs to get there quick time. And the Byzantines. Let's check out the water level. Still water level 1. You know, yeah, he's got to get that water level up. That's for sure. Missing out heavily. But the great thing for the tech up for the Ottomans, by the way, is that inherently it buys time. The reason because of that is because it forces the Byzantines into some uh, certain types of plays. In particular, getting siege workshops. Because, of course, the Mehmed Imperial Armory for the Ottomans will give them access to Mangonels, which the Byzantines will certainly want to counter, especially if they go for a heavily uh, you know, infantry-based army, which they are at the point. So, you know, this army is just very much counterable by Mangonels, so he has to find a way to deal with those. And the only way to do that is probably Springles at this point. Although, uh, we have seen some stable unit play, like the Cataphract can sometimes charge on through. It's a bit risky, but if they can get on top of the Mangonels and Siege, it can be a, ni a nice way to deal with it. We'll see if maybe the Byzantines opt for that, but obviously he's already got the Siege Workshop, so we can see we're likely to get some Spring Olds. Balanced Projectiles comes in for the ranged units for the uh, the Byzantines, coming around the back here with a couple of horsemen. 
I was venturing out to the deer camp and to the berries. This could be a, a really nice source of food for sure. And he's keeping it protected though. Ooh, villages on gold exposed. And don't forget, he's got Expelatore, so these villages will go down pretty quickly. Does lose one. Should lose a second, I suspect. But if the Janitors can get on top of this, those horsemen will die. Does get a 40 gold out of that little skirmish. As they head north to the villages on the deer camp and berry. So the Byzantines are aware of this. So it could potentially look to... Oh, he's going to snipe more villagers. Villagers brought into the uh, range of the Sapahi. And he's attacking the outpost now. When did that go up? Kalada's on a... He's everywhere. Building a mosque as well to get the relics. I don't think Kalada actually knows about this. But he will know eventually once the relic... He, he sees it disappear. Oh, Sipahi diving on in. Can't really take that fight. We'll lose a couple. It's actually starting to become a bit of a massive army. Kind of scary to see. Varingan guards sprinkled in as well. And the uh, miniature schools could be in danger. Three of them. Four of them, in fact. The army grouping together. Looks like it's going to buy some more time. Might give up a bit of positioning. Not for the first time in this game. I think it's about the Golden Horn Tower, by the way. It does give him free units, but he kind of needs the uh, the water level to be higher. Takes out the first of the military school, but you can see Sassy being super patient, waiting and waiting, waiting for the Manganel, which is just about to pop up in three seconds. That could be a big difference maker. If he can keep that protected, it'll be huge. Here comes the play. Meta coming involved as well. So the key units for the Ottomans coming in to play right when he needs it. Mehta going to give an additional 20%, 15% rather, attack speed bonus. And also the Manganel. Manganel not getting involved just yet, though. Keeping it hidden, I guess. Now, the Man of Arms actually is a unit that I really love as the Ottomans. It scales really well to the late game, especially when you add in Bombards, the uh, the Great Bombard in the Imperial Age. Obviously, you've got a long way to go before that happening, but it's a really nice meat shield unit. In fact, incidentally, we see a Manganel coming out for the Byzantines. A massive shot on those units. They were clumped up together. That was huge. A massive pick off there with the HP. Never actually killed any of the units, but valuable HP taken off them. That was a cracking shot there for the Ottomans. Picking in some of the relics. Already got one deposited, another one coming in. It's actually kind of interesting because the, the Byzantines may never actually venture out here until uh, a lot later in the game. Yeah, I wonder if he ever, he's ever going to spot it. He's on the deer camp in a big way. But we are starting to head towards the sort of 25 minute mark of the game where olive grove transitions, farming transitions become a bit more, more important. So we could start to see that happening. Building the production on the back. I like this actually now because, you know, a lot of times production on the front, if the Byzantines do look to be continuing the aggression, which, I mean, it's Gilardi, right? So it's going to happen. Oh, he might snipe the Mangadel. I think he gets it. Oh, he doesn't in the end. Religious repairing that could be clutch. But certainly production being at the back means that he won't uh, lose the production capabilities for a while unless they go around the back. Bringing guards. Oh, hacking and slashing. But two outposts in a, in a good spot here. That's definitely helpful. Building up a large military number there. 86 military units for Kilar D. That's looking a bit dangerous, I've got to say. Wallaloo. I think he has this one. He should get it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, I killed him instead. Okay, fair enough. Manganel going to start working in the outpost down the south. Going to deny the berry, the uh, the deer camp rather, coming on in. And uh, in terms of long-term consequences, in terms of um, you know landmark choices, we talked about the Grand Winery for the Byzantines, right? It's um, it's a situation where. You know, the horseman got a good value, but Sassy's ability to defend is, it was exceptional, and it meant that actually, at this point, you know, at this stage of the game, you're probably thinking, I wish we had the Grand Winery. Because you can imagine how much olive oil could be coming in right now. But choices have to be made, and they were made. Snipes out the uh, the monk. For the Sabahi, keeping active on the map. Looking to carve the map with some palisades, but that will be denied. Fortunately for the Ottomans. 
Keeps the villagers alive, though. Good reaction for Sassy to spot that in. I mean, he knows about it, right? The house was being attacked. Another man get out on the field for the Ottomans. Oh, we might snipe that one. Will he get it in the end? I think Mantam should dive on that. Does get it in the end. That's massive, by the way, because now that allows the two Mangonels to come in for the Ottomans. Uncontested. Takes out a huge shot. Takes out a lot of HP of those infantry units for the Byzantines. He's chasing with a man at arms. Doesn't really feel like there's enough there. Bring your guards there. Good number of uh, meta as well, just adding to the fight. Janissaries involved as well. There aren't any cavalry. Well, actually, there are a couple of cavalry units on the back. They start to ride on in, but bring in guards. And the infantry units for the Byzantines looking healthy in numbers. They're pushing on in. They need to protect the Mangonels. This could be huge, actually. A good few Mangonel shots could be massive for this fight. He splits them up, but crossbows take some massive damage. Oh, with the one Mangonel shot. Can't get on top of the Mangonels just yet. But it might soon. This could be dangerous with the Mangonel shots coming in. Takes out another batch of crossbows. And another will keep the Mangonels alive for now. Oh, coming in with a Sabahi on the right side. Right on top of the longbows. Now he's going to go right to the back line on the crossbows first. And the Maganel staying alive for so long. It's doing so much damage. That's clutch. Wasn't able to take him down. It's such low on HP and he keeps it alive for now. Ringing guard will take it down in the end, but still survives with one Maganel. The two Maganels there were absolute MVP. That was a huge fight for the Ottomans. Not really expecting to have seen it head that way in that in that direction, but he won it in a big way. The Maganel is working really well for the Ottomans. And guess what? They were absolutely free. Spy poking and prodding at villagers on the map, but that was huge. That was a huge fight there. That's for sure for the Ottomans. Now Kilardi has to start from afresh again, producing military. Still on water level one, he's just not really taking advantage of the Byzantines' economy. He's full pedal to the metal. To land the berries on the south, and yeah, I think at this point the uh, Sassi might need to get farming transition. He's got the wood for it. But, uh, because the deer camp and the berries are running out in the north. And the berries in the south is being denied quite heavily, although he might get control of it once again. The Mangonels, they've had so much value for the Ottomans, I've got to say. It's one of those units that actually, you know, if they're sniped, it can be a really big problem for you. But if they do a massive amount of damage, it can turn the tide of the fight in a big way. And it did just that in that last fight. Relics-wise, uh, the Ottomans actually have brought in three so far. Two of them are in the north. Looks like the Byzantines might continue the Olive Grove transition. Needs a bit more. There it is. They're starting to make them. But we are certainly heading to that phase of the game where siege becomes a becomes a thing. Three Mangonels and a Springhold, and I think we saw a couple of Springholds and a Mangonel or two for the Byzantines as well. <laughs> Moving out to the middle map, looking to get hold of the 8,000 gold tiles, which of, of which there are two by the way, so uh, looks like the Byzantines going for the one on the south. This is where things become a bit dicey for both players. They are being drawn to the mid-map. Because, of course, this is a, a really key resource. They need that gold control. No, no messing about, by the way, with the villagers. Getting 18 to build that up. Spy going to this 8,000 tile gold vein. And uh, he's going to deny those villagers if he picks them off. He spots the, uh, the, the mining camp being deleted, by the way. Going to try and make a bit of a playpen for himself with the villagers. Trap them in. He's only going to keep them safe. Nice play there by Kilardi to keep them alive. Can try and get a gate as well. That's actually smart play, gotta say. We'll lose maybe one or two. Could have been a lot worse. Keeps my knife for now. Gonna get the army there, I suspect. Yeah, gonna send the Limitani. Oh, that's actually smart. Well, they might. Wait, how much HP is left? There's actually one Palisade really weak there. There it is. It gets taken down. And Spy gonna get some kills here for sure. Gets one. Possibly a second. Yeah, should even maybe even get a third. Little Limitani come in just at time. Gonna get the keep up eventually. But uh, what's kind of interesting is the Ottomans might just dive in on the main base. Knowing that the Limitani have been sent southwards, it gives Sassi a good opportunity to push on forward, and that's exactly what he's doing. Smart play. The 
The keep will go up eventually, not without having suffered some losses. But gotta say, the economy looking pretty strong for both players. The food income looking a lot better for the Byzantines. Obviously, they've had the olive grove transition. Looks like the Ottomans are starting to get that online. Yeah, it looks like the barriers do replenish without the uh, even without the twin minaret madrasa. It's kind of a uh, kind of funny. And that's uh, clearly a bug, but it is what it is. Now I think both players are going to start to try and deny gold off each other. Very equal game, I got to say. Finally poised this one. Two Springles, though. It does feel like he's got more siege. Takes a massive Maganel shot there. The Ottomans take a massive hit. And that was a great shot for the Byzantines this time. Maganel's deploying on each other. But it feels like the Man of Tarns are starting to push on a little bit for the Ottomans. Got to be careful fighting that choke point. Maganel gets some good damage on the back line. Don't forget the increased attack speed is pretty heavy. Does have a couple of Lance Ganesh there, the Byzantines. And I think the Ottomans might lose a lot here. He will. The Mangadel's backing away. That's a lot of army there for the Byzantines. Got Longbowmen as well. Veteran Longbowmen at that. Sabai going to dive on in. Going to try and snipe a Mangadel. Won't happen. Around the back though. Getting some good raiding value with Man of Tarms. A couple of Janissaries. Looking dicey at the back of the Byzantine base. He's heading home now. Overall, pretty even fights. Considering he lost a little bit on the back for the Byzantines. But the Ottomans, down to 40 military. He's going to need to keep up pumping. They just need to come out back to work. Trebuchet on the field for the Byzantines. But yeah, a small force here for the Ottomans, forcing the Byzantines back a little bit with their military, splitting up the army. We'll give the Ottomans a little bit more breathing space. But it needs to find a response to the Trebuchet for sure. And uh, yeah, the, the thing is that the farming transition is going to be a hard one for the for the Ottomans. The Byzantines have slowly been doing it. He's got plenty of wood. It just takes a bit of time for the farms to actually be constructed. But slowly but surely he's getting there. I did a second town centre as well, by the way. Going to try and catch up a little bit on the village account. And three trebuchets now added. That keep is going to be very hard to keep alive. He's going to have to try and repair, maybe. He does have a bit of stone in the bank, but, you know, that will idle villagers. He might just give up. I think he's going to back away from that position, which is kind of scary because and it just means he's got this uh, 3,500 gold left in the bank to be taken, and then that's it if he loses his position. Could be rough here for the Ottomans. We'll see how he can respond. I think at this point it's about it's about biding his time here, the Ottomans, just to wait for the food to come back online. Like, he's going to get... That food count is going to increase very quickly now that the farms are built. Just needs a little bit more time and then he can pump out units once again. But in the meantime, he might lose the keep in the position. Yeah, the Byzantines want control again. That's not something that the Ottomans will want to let happen too easily if he can afford it. But the miniature numbers is looking pretty devastating. Only one Springhold though. Actually, wait. He's got two Springholds. I mean... If the Mangonels for the Ottomans can focus on the Springles and take them down, if the Springles get taken down, that number of Mangonels could be huge. He deletes the keep he has to. Because that could have been lost otherwise. Two Springles do get a hit off, but the Spy might dive on top of that. Kiladi backing away, not taking any chances, going to the Stealth Forest. He needs to get a Mangonel placed inside the outpost. Manatar's moving on in. Mangonels deploy, does lose one Mangonel. Three of them remain. Does I mean, he's getting a good couple of hits with them. Pulls back on the Man of Tarms. He's going to sacrifice them for now. It does snipe the Manganel and backs away. Mostly Limitani on the field, which the Man of Tarms will deal with nicely. And I actually really like the Man of Tarms play because, of course, Limitani is a really a flagship unit. For oh, wait. Massive shot. No, it doesn't quite land on many of them. But yeah, on that thought, the Limitani are quite a flagship unit for the Byzantines. In the late game, they can be spammed. And obviously, with the shield wall ability, can make for a really strong push. Man of Tarms, are, you know, it's an ideal play against them. And the reason I like it is because obviously if the Byzantines do posture towards Nemitani, well, Man of Times is going to be made by the Ottomans. It forces the Byzantines into crossbowmen, which then the Ottomans get free siege engines. So actually, in a way, I do like the Ottomans' position in terms of like army composition. 
And that is, of course, if the Byzantines do keep posturing towards the Limitane. I mean, the other options could be maybe cataphracts if they get to that stage where they've got a good economy to do so. But I think generally, if this army composition persists in this way, I do kind of favour the Ottoman situation. Well, wait, I don't favour them in this fight, though. Limitane versus Sapahi. Okay, the Imperialists are coming in for the Byzantines at a forward position with the Foreign Engineering Company. Can I get access to some siege engines? The Royal Cannon is one, but few of them. Got the nest of bees and also the Hui Hui Pao. I suspect we won't see that. I'd love to see it though. The North, a couple of ringing guards being sent there to try and deny the gold. That's there. And I think, you know, he spotted the, uh, oh, they're going to make a dash for it. The gold in the North has been spotted. And it looks like uh, Sassy going to try and recuperate those two relics. Jump in with a couple of spy, a bit of raiding action going on. Forcing the business home a little bit. Sending supply down the south. There's a lot of villages and gold. Holy moly. He's mopping them up quickly. Uh, the kind of concern for the Ottomans, though, as the game does go super late, is the fact that with the foreign engineering company, the fact that these units can be placed and built with uh, mostly, well, completely olive oil. You know, gold is uh, going to be running out soon on the map, right? We're heading to the 40th minute mark of the game almost. And to be fair, there are two tiles of gold in the north, but once that gets expired, there's one tile in the middle. That's not going to last all that long. Maybe another 10, 15 minutes, perhaps. Once it goes down, it just, you know, the olive oil starts to really kick in in terms of, of its importance. Going to clean up the army back at home. Going to keep as well defending the farms. Going to extend the walls on the right side with the keep. I like the plate because the farms are a really critical area to protect, of course. Food income in the late game. It's something you don't want to have denied. Is he still... Jeez, Louise. Come on, man. He's still water level one. Kiladi says, I do not want the cistern upgrades... I do not care. In the north. Keep. Not going to go up, I'm afraid. Has to be deleted there for the Ottomans. Things going from bad to worse, actually, for the Ottomans, because he's actually going to lose those two relics in the north, and the Byzantines have, have picked them up. I think the north is actually quite a strategic area, because, uh, although, to be fair, the same with the south as Boar and the gold. Not that the boar is actually uh, particularly relevant for the Ottomans. Of course, they're a civilization adhering to the Islamic tradition, so they can't actually get that beat. Uh, uh, means that the Byzantines could head that way, though. Ah, uh, that's a lot of siege, guys. That's a lot of units in the middle of the map, focused. And if they push on in, could be dangerous. It's getting keeping them forward position again. Getting control of the gold vein. Sassy. Gets to the Imperial Age. Uh, question in chat. What do the uh, systems do for the Byzantines? Uh, so there's uh, a couple of elements to them. Uh, the main one is the passive. Uh, well, they're all passive, but the irrigation is means that they get the villager gather rate increased. By standard, water level 1 is 10%, and then you additional uh, plus 4% every water level you go up to, up to a level of 5 so uh, it's pretty decent overall as a good increase on the gather rate, but also increases the production speed of military buildings, as we see a massive raid here in the north on the gold vein. Yeah, so you have three toggable abilities on the cisterns. Where's that cistern gone? Where is it? Where, where are we? You only made one, so... Either way, oh, there it is. So Conscriptio, depending on the water level, increases the production uh, speed of the military buildings. Got Dialecticus, which increases the research rate of your techs, and then Presidium, which uh, reduces the the damage your buildings take. So it's a pretty big bonus to forego, actually. It's, a, it's, it's the heart of the Byzantine economy, really. Mangadal's pushed that with a bit of fighting force in the south. Actually, all of a sudden, like the army being split for the Byzantines is actually starting to hurt a little bit. Janissaries in good numbers. Man at arms in particular. Mangadal and Blazon inside the outpost could do some decent damage. It's gone for a lot of Janissaries added in. Trebuchet is focusing on the keep again. He's trying to keep that repairing. He's going to flood in a lot of stone into that, but he's losing a lot of units to the Mangonel emplacements. They get a bit of a raiding party down the south, but the Mangonel's joining the party. That's a lot of siege, guys, and they have a lot of them have been free, I suspect. Keeps the, uh, the keep alive for now, but the Sprinkles need to get on top of that. Nesta B's added into the mix for the Byzantines from the Foreign Engineering Company. Farms being raided quite heavily by the Limitane. This is what the Limitane is doing. Oh god, okay, right. Well, that's one way to deal with them. The bombard emplacement inside the keep. Otherwise, Limitane will be surviving a lot longer. That's massive. Did have a couple of ringing guns. Oh my god, that could be huge. Oh my god, that was massive. Oh dear. 
Fizzities have to back away. Huge Maganel shot from the Ottomans. And he's pushing on in. He just doesn't care. He's going to take out another massive of the crossbows. Oh, and a blink of an eye. The Ottomans coming in with a massive Maganel play. He can take out this uh, Maganel placement of the Apos, though. He won't want to lose too many of these Janissaries if he can help it. Losing a lot of the siege, though. A lot of Springles on the back line. Taking the Mang Manganels out. And he's backing away now. Keeps three alive. But that was huge. I feel like it's still worth it. Despite losing the Manganels, it was a massive decimation of that army. I mean, it was worth it for me. I loved watching it. I'll, I'll take that. Still, the three trebuchets kept alive for Kilardi. Going to continue the pressure. It has been built up again, repaired. <laughs> I got to say, that was probably the best Maganel shots I've seen in like one go. That was huge. Uh, one thing to consider, though, we did mention it earlier in the cast where the Imperial Age for the, the Ottomans is actually very strong. You start to get into premium units in terms of the Man at Arms and the Great Bombards, of which there's the first one. Now, there is an upgrade for the Ottomans. I think it's called Siege Works, I believe, where you can um, you know, garrison infantry in the siege engines themselves. It comes as a Vizier point. I'm not so... I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look like he's got it, but it'd be pretty cool if you had it because it does reduce the uh, the deployment speed and also, I think, the uh, the attack speed. Not the attack speed, but the first hit speed or something like that. The attack speed, yeah. One of the two. It, it goes on my mind sometimes. I've forgotten it. But it's definitely a great upgrade for it, although there's a decent number of Springles there for Kilardi. And with good Mike, might take out the, it takes it out. Sassy did send two villages to try and repair, or a couple of villages, but didn't quite manage it. I think keep goes down eventually. Well, the villages are coming. They brought in to repair. There's no stone in the bank though for the Ottomans. Buys it anyway from the market. Oh, Maganel placements though for the Byzantines. Does lose the keep in the end. This is such a great back and forth game. Heading to the 42nd minute of the game, and I guess factoring in all consideration, like with the gold starting to expire on the map. It's going to come down to the fact that the Byzantines have olive oil. And it's going to come down to the fact that the Ottomans have free units. So which will be more powerful? We'll have to see. Taking the gold in the south. I think Byzantines though, they've got full control of the two gold veins that still exist. Although there's only a thousand left in that or so. A thousand three hundred and... Yeah, in total about, about four thousand gold in total on the map left to be taken. Great Bombard going to make short work of the outposts. More Olive Groves coming around the back. Now all of a sudden there's the Cisterns coming up. Finally! He's going to use them. Making our way in the north with... Uh, this is actually a scary force to deal with. Elite Varingian Guards. They are pretty tanky. It's going to be hard to deal with. He does have the keep with the cannon emplacement around the back, but... Could do a lot more damage. Oh, Connor Stewie, new to the game? Well, welcome in. It's great to have you here. We love to always see people coming in new to the game. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for hopping in. And yeah, the Ottomans get free units because they have a, a special building called the Military Academy. Or Military School, rather. And uh, it's just a... Uh, it trickles in units. You can kind of change them to different unit types. But we'll talk about it in a second because there's a lot of Mangonels from both players. Although the Mangonels for the Ottomans have been taken down. Keep being torched down. I think it's Janissary is mostly being built by the Ottomans. And he gets around on the Manganos. If we can get on top of the Manganos, get them out for the Byzantines. That would be huge. Oh, could you see a Wallolo? Could potentially. Great Bombard. Can I take out the keep? There's the Wallolo. Oh, there's Sabai. Might dive on there. He might get it in the end. Oh, it's the back way. Sabai. Oh, he's going to lose the Sabai. Okay, just one. It could have been a lot worse, of course. But he will take out the uh, the keep. And also maybe the trebuchet. Does he get the trebuchet? No, I'm not sure he does. Three Janissaries having to run away. Does take the keep out. The Bombard have to back away for the Ottomans. Bringing guards around the back line are starting to take, be taken care of, which is uh, definitely important. But there you go. Sassy in chat, by the way, one of the players answering the question. Thank you so much, Sassy. appreciate it. But yeah, Connor, if you have any other questions, just fire away. I'm sure people in Twitch chat will uh, get you up to speed. There's a lot to unpack, a lot to uncover if you're new to the game. So be patient with it. Lots to uh, discover. It's certainly great to have new players in the scene. So welcome on in. Behind Janissaries, we'll clear that up eventually. But he's back on gold, Sassy. He's got a, the, the the good thing for Sassy. He's got a decent gold bank. That's not to be underestimated because he can try and spend that quite you know frugally and in a good way, and just leverage the free units from the Ottomans in the meantime. Yeah, but I gotta say this has been such a fantastic game, guys. I've enjoyed every minute of it. 
it started off crazy and it's been crazy throughout. Biology can come in, so all important Imperial Age upgrades from the University for the Ottomans. Uh, yeah, this is what excites me about the Ottomans, the, the, the army units, right? The, the Sapahi, the Manatams, Bombards, have got two of them now. The Byzantines, you know, they've got the Vringan Guards mostly. Could potentially get a couple of Royal Cannons to add into the siege fight side of things, but I don't know. It feels like the Ottomans' late game has been super importantly strong in the last uh, couple of months. Freaking guards coming around the south, but I have to go through the keep. Does it have a cannon in placement? Hasn't got it just yet. It's coming in now. Do the Vringi guards try and torch this down? It does have boiling oil, but... It's going to go on spread formation. Going to go for the villagers first. Uses the berserking ability on the Vringi guards. It's going to go for the farms, it seems. It does have a keep with a bomb out in placement in this one, so it should be okay to hold on for a bit, but... Will cause a bit of idle time. Now the thing is, is when you're raiding like that, it fins your main force, right? At the back, at the main base. And I'm actually concerned for Duck because, or Claudia, I should say, because he, you know, half of his army is in the base of the Ottomans. Try to do some damage. They'll get some damage, but is it going to be significant? I'm not so sure. What that does mean, the Vringan guards aren't here to fight. And he does lose one of the siege engines. Two great bombards going to work on the foreign engineering company, which is massive. Placed in a forward position. Here comes a forward keep with a lot of villagers. The keep drop coming in for the Ottomans. Going to get a control in this position. Going to get on top of the Grand Winery with two relics garrison inside. Slowly but surely, the Ottomans pushing on forward. Sabai diving on the Springhold. That's massive. Because he doesn't have any other Springholds on the map. And that means the two great bombards are going to get huge value. The Janissaries have a good area to fight and attack with. Mass bringing guards, though. Going to be pushing on in. Sabahi tagging that front line. Oh, the keep won't get up in the end. There's a trebuchet. Villagers pushed off. That's massive, the ringing guards, just too tanky. Janissaries are trying their best, but it feels like the defender's advantage is working well for the Byzantines. Villagers coming out again to try and have another bite at the cherry, another bite at the cookie, but the trebuchet is still working on the keep. This is a bit of a problematic situation. Diving with Spy now. Oh wait, that trebuchet is super exposed. Spy going to dive on top of that. We'll take out the trebuchet, and that gives a really good fighting chance for the keep to go up. I suspect it will. I mean, the Manganel placement is still getting very good value. Springle comes out, but the two Bombards take care of that. He's got to take out this outpost, actually. It's causing a bit of a problem. They keep on fire. And does he have stone to repair? He does have pretty... He yeah, does have a stone, to be fair. They keep his up. He's repairing. That's absolutely huge. The Byzantine economy is under fire. He's got plenty of food and wood in the bank, but... Struggling to spend it, it seems. Sapahi diving on in. Sassy spending all his resources... Looking in good shape, right? He's losing a bit at the back. Actually, to be fair, the situation, by the way, one thing to consider: if bringing guards attacking at the base on the farms, he might be killing villagers. And guess what? That's actually possibly doing a bit of a favor for Sassy. Although, to be fair, she doesn't have the resources to keep up to 200 population, so maybe not. He definitely would want those villagers. But sometimes, game, some game states are situations where you have 200 population and you lose villagers, and it actually just means you have more population for army. Speaking of army, the Ottomans army riding on in. Going to take out that town center pretty quickly, especially with the two bombards. He's repairing the bombards as well, which were weakened a little bit. That keep a really good staging ground. Villagers coming forward. Is going to get the villagers' torches out? Quite possibly. He's going to go for another keep. And that's a get out of my game keep if you've ever seen one. Sassy was under so much pressure in the early game, but now it's time to turn the tables. You see the Byzantines using the market heavily. And the problem for... Gilardis is focusing on the army, meaning that the villagers might get the keep up. Wait, 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 it's not, it's not a done deal. That keep might not go up in the oh, Wait, Sassy, he's got to have, he's got to have, uh, he's got to have textiles, right? Yeah, he's got it in the end. Keep doesn't go up in the end. Just getting denied. And he might just come in for another bite of the cherry. He's done it before. I wonder if he'll send a couple of imams to snag those relics. Good numbers of Janissaries. It's really funny, difficult to push on out here, Gilardi. He's using a lot of villagers to repair. He's kind of draining his wood supplies a little bit. More importantly, he's keeping a lot of villagers idle. He has plenty of villagers, to be fair. The army numbers looking really heavy for the Ottomans. The Ottoman war machine continues. Two bombards going to start taking out infrastructure. That's massive. Oh, Veringa guards might try and take out the bombards. Janissary is keeping a surround on them. Protecting the bombards with everything he's got. Trying to get an outpost. Villagers coming out for the keep once again. He's not giving up on this play, and this time it might work. Because the Byzantines only 20 military. It's looking for Darcy, raiding a little bit with a couple of Sabahi around in the southeast. They'll attack that second town center that had been placed earlier in the game. But that keep going up, it's going to be problematic. 
Isle of Grove transition. More importantly, the, Frel the Relics are going to be uh, denied in a big way. 50 minutes on the clock, and it feels like now Gilardi, he's on the ropes. He's still got a very, very healthy villager lead. Speaking of which, a lot of them here going to be taken down by the keep, though, with a great bombard in placement. That's not looking good for him. The village count going to plummet very heavily. It's all about the military at this point. Three bombards, Wallolo coming. Wait, he's going to get the villagers? Maybe not. Just a bit of a, a Wallolo to say, hey, I'm here. And that massive war machine of the Ottomans. A fourth bombard added in. Going to be massive. I don't think there's a way back for Killard. This army just looking way too strong. Sipahi, Janissary, great bombards. It's such a strong army composition. You gotta love this army composition for sure. And there it is, then, gentlemen. The Ottomans triumph. The Byzantines have to tap out. In the end, the Ottomans come in with the Sipahi. They come in with Janissaries. They come in with great bombards. And that was a great victory for the Ottomans. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up on YouTube. Take care and see you next time.